I have used Bamboo Lab X1C 3D printer almost year now. It's great printer, one of the most liked 3D printers I have used. But there are some things what could be different and some add-ons would be nice to have. After some browsing I found quite many add-ons for this printer. These add-ons are mostly 3D printed. There are certainly more and better add-ons you can buy or print. If you have problems with the much vibration you can print these feet. I printed this with Bamboo Lab TPU. You can use less infill to make them softer or you can also use softer TPU. Before you can install new feet, you can need to remove original feet. They are held in with double sided tape. New feet hold in place quite nicely but if you want you can add some glue. Easiest to install them if you turn your printer on its side but don't forget to remove glass top before you do it. If I shake the printer, it seems that they are working. I haven't noticed too much vibration on my printer, so I think I will change back the original feet. X1C burst filament is thrown out from the back and there are no box or container included with the printer. I use this cardboard box to collect the waste filament. There are lots of different ones you can choose. Some are smaller, some are bigger, some have fixed to the printer with screws or magnets. I am sure they all do their job. You just need to find one which you like most. I choose this one because I have positioned my printer so that there isn't much room back. Also the side container design makes easier to see how much room I have inside. I use glitter BLA filament which isn't the best option. It has rough surface that's not very good. Use regular BLA instead. I used it because I had this filament just laying around without use. If you have more than one build plate, you need to store them somewhere. For that, you can print different design holders. You can find one that meets your needs. I have one extra plate right now, so I choose this three plate one. I like the cool design. It don't take much room on the desk and I don't need worry it falling over. The doorknob is one of the things I think should be a little different. The issue with that is there isn't much room to hold the knob. There are different solutions. I printed some of them to see what I would like best. The first one is the door finger loop, which can be slided on the original doorknob. It prints fast and works okay, but not my first choice. Next one also slides on the original knob. It fits nicely and stays in place well. It has Bamboo Lab logo on it. It looks good, but I think it's too big. Same design, but smaller, could be nice. You can also add extension for the original doorknob, but you will need to have longer screws. There are ones that can be screwed in place, like the factory one. This one is quite easy to use. This one is similar design as the big one, but little bit too small. This one has nice design, to install it you need to heat it in thirds. I didn't have right one, so I can't install it. Another one. This is the one I chose. It's same design as factory one, but extended. It's easier to hold. The side fan don't have cover on it, something can hit the blade. I haven't had it happen and I think it's unlikely happening. But never say never. I found this nice cover for it and it fits well. I printed it with PLA which should be okay but PTG will be better. I found more covers from other places. Zero top end covers. There are two different ones I found. First are simple round covers. They are just lay on the top of the bearing, not fixed in place. Next one are bigger covers, which covers all the C-rod upper holder. I like the design, these are fixed in place. But do you need these covers? I think not, they don't have functional use. More like design elements. Their bearings on the top are closed bearings, so dust or dirt can't get in, and rod ends don't need covering. The bigger covers also are blocking the camera view.
The boob should cut out is done bigger than it needed to be. To remove this open space, you can print this cover. You can also print X and Y axis motors, pulley covers, more bumble logos. You can also print without logos. It's starting to have too much logos on it. I think these covers are must have one either. If you don't have 3D printer, but you need something to 3D print, just type in pcbweight.com and start ordering your stuff. There are many different types of 3D printing you can choose from. Different materials, PCBWay also makes custom PCBs. They provide CNC milling series, sheet metal fabrication and injection molding. If you want to print TPU, it's not recommended to use AMS. So you will use spool holder on the back. But there is a problem. Spool will be rubbing against the EMS hub, so you need to remove the hub. But if you don't want to do it every time, you can add spool holder extension. There isn't made slot for the holder sleeve, so I add a spacer on the other side. Not hitting the EMS hub anymore. There is even better solution for that. It's side spool holder. It can be easily fold up or down. If you don't want to use AMS, you can just remove the tube. But if you don't want to remove the tube every time, you can add Y connector. You can 3D print Y splitter and add the tube connectors, but you can also buy one. The 3D printed one isn't smooth inside and it will have more resistance, so it's recommended to buy one for smoother filament feed. 3D printed one will wear down after some time. When you load the filament into the feeder, you need to push the release. There are a small edge under your finger which isn't pleasant. But you can print add-ons which makes it much better. These things you can just push on and if you add PDF E tube it will not wear down. There is one more problem with the printer. After half year of use I noticed the bottom tube is rubbing against the top lead. I didn't have time to deal with it, and almost half a year later, the tube is starting to rub through the tube. There are different opt options to deal with it. Easiest and fastest way is to print tube guide. I printed it with PTG. Not rubbing anymore. You can also print glass riser. Some of them also have place for extra lights. I printed this AMS riser, which has many functions. It also biggest add-on I printed for X1C. It took 85 hours and 33 minutes and almost 2.2 kilos filament. You can add LED light strip with glue or zip ties. There are holes made for zip ties. There are two slots for build beds, or you can put their extra bed stickers. Two drawers for spare parts and accessories. If you want, you can add extra handle, but I think I don't need this. There are also extra blades for the top lead if you want to keep it off when printing. 
The top buttons will be also accessible. You can still tilt the screen. The light is so good now. I haven't cleaned the glass yet. The DPU sealant is blocking the light, so if you look down, it's not hurting your eyes. Without the extra light, with the extra light. This is very nice add-on, and you can add more things to it. On the side are slots for add-ons. I printed HSW, which is short for the honeycomb storage wall. You can find different holders from the web and you can also make your own, very easy to add different tool holders. Bottom of the wall was not touching the printer when I didn't have any tools holders and tools on it, but with the tools it hangs nicely against the printer. When I searched for add-ons I found some tools which could be useful. First I found two different design carbon rods cleaning tools, you need to clean carbon ro rods regularly. This cleaning tool works quite good. Before I used just a piece of cloth, but with this tool it's much easier. I found one more cleaning tool for carbon fiber rods. It has the same working principle as the other, but different design. This one seems to work ok too. The springs will hold the tension against the rod. I don't know how long the spring hold its tension force, but if it go loose you can print new one. When you have filament breaks, you sometimes need to remove the filament tubes. To make it easier, here are some tools made for that. It's a simple tool for that, easy to use and easy to lose. It's quite small, so it's easy to lose. But if you are afraid to lose it, you can print this and leave it on the tube. So if you need to remove the tube, you have it already there. Tube remover tools are popular needed tools, so you can find much different ones from the web. Like this one, which is made for both tubes on the EMS hub. Here is a tool for disconnecting the AMS tube and cable. Here are a collection of different tools. I found some tools which should help removing calibration strips. To get it under the strips, it's a little bit tricky, but if you do, it's working well. The handle is on the way when you reach the end, but overall it's good. The second one is similar design, but I had problems to get it under the strips. Pambula page scraper will handle it also. As you saw in the video, some of them are functional and some of them are not. There are much more add-ons and accessories you can print for X1Z. Surely, there can be better add-ons, but I like AMS Tracer most. So, if you want to print some add-ons yourself, I hope you got better overview of these ones I printed. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.